Well, that's the only moment where I can really meet everybody at once. So for the retailers, I think that's very important. They can see us, but they can also see the other brands. And also what is very important is that I can meet all the journalists. I think fair, uh, fair like Basel World um, uh, still will keep its importance in the scheme of things. To meet our worldwide retailers, um, Basel World is the opportunity and um, I think the relevance will uh, will be upheld. It is very important to take the opportunity to present a new technology at an event like Basel World because we need to show the whole world that not only the brand but the industry is very dynamic and moving forward. I started here 10 years ago with a little table and a backdrop with a photo and everybody was just walking past me. Uh, 10 years have gone by, we've got this incredible booth just at the entry at Hall 1.0. I never actually thought we would be able to be here. So so um, yeah, it's been quite a it's been quite a journey, and it's by far the best fair we've ever had. We are the first time here in Basel to Basel World, and very, very pleased and surprised by the internationality of the Messe. Ja, wir hätten uns keinen besseren Start wünschen können. Wir sind dieses Jahr in 2019 sehr angespannt zu der Basel World hingefahren. Wir wussten nicht, was uns erwartet. Wir fahren aber sehr, sehr entspannt zurück. Die Messe ist viel besser gelaufen, als wir es erwartet hätten. Wir haben sehr, sehr gut abverkauft. Wir haben sehr, sehr viel teure Steine abverkauft. I've been in Basel World since 1977 and this is the show of shows. It's the only show in the world that combines the true watch brands and the true jewelry brands. Sehr verehrte Damen und Herren, Ladies and Gentlemen, mes chers amis, mesdames et messieurs, Ladies and gentlemen, greetings also to all those who are watching on screen it's online. Uh, and thank you all of you to, to be here. Uh, je suis très impressionné de voir autant de personnes. I'm impressed by the throngs um, here. Et puis aussi impressed, part, uh, but at the same time uh, quite excited to be able to present to you this pre closing press conference and on this occasion share with you what we've experienced these past few years, days and then in the second part, the more substantive part is the future of Basel World. We will present to you our vision, our ideas for Basel World 2020 and after that. Before I do so, I can tell you that I'm not used to being alone on the stage. Some in our business love to be on their own on a stage and present all on their own. For me, it's the first time, so I'm a bit inhibited, but let me start right away. Before going to the figures which you're interested in, number of visitors, number of exhibitors, perhaps a few other figures that you are less familiar with. My team and myself walked more than a thousand kilometers these past few days. We received the vast majority, if not all, of the exhibitors, especially those who have been at Basel World this year, but also those who left and whom we would like to return to. Basel World, we had more than 827 meetings with all of you. So you can imagine it's a very intensive time, not just for us, but for you too. I don't know how many terabytes of photographs, videos, clips, reports you produced, how many sheets of A4 paper you filled. The figures are indeed impressive. The figures that you can see here on the screen will probably not surprise you. We've had fewer visitors, minus 22% and minus 20% of exhibitors or exhibiting brands. And as far as the media are concerned, 
That is to say, people actually present in Basel world, here in Basel, we've had a reduction of 12%. On the next slide, you will see that these 12% that we have lost as a physical presence here at Basel World, we were able to recover in digital form. We've had plus 12% in media reach, digital media reach. Let me now also turn to everything that has changed at Basel World. We've already mentioned this in the past, but you have to understand that Basel World is in full transformation. In the last nine months, my team and myself have been able to achieve quite interesting things, and I think you will agree with me when I say impressive. The show plaza, where we are at present, is a new initiative, a completely new initiative, and will fit into the concept of Basel World in the future. We need a space for events, for conferences, workshops. We had four catwalks a day and between two to 400 people from the public actually came to these events. So that was quite impressive. In fact, next year, we will further develop this activity. Then in terms of hospitality, as I said on the opening day, hospitality takes all priority. The way you receive your friends, your customers, your clients is absolutely primordial. It's essential. And we received feedback from you that helped us to improve hospitality. At this point, I would like to thank the 75% of hotel capacity, as to say, all those hotels that participated in this new pro program. I would like to thank all those restaurants in Basel who also participated in a special program we have set up. And last but not least, I'd like to thank the caterers who provided catering here on the premises of Basel World. A new style of catering was offered so that this service too would be improved, which was a service which didn't do so well in past years. Then, this is probably the first change that you actually felt yourself and that the customers saw with their own eyes when they came to Basel. We had to change Hall 1.0, and the feedback we received from visitors and from our exhibitors, for those, those who are in Hall 1.0, but also in others, has been very positive. This new configuration with this opening is very typical of our spirit, the spirit of our team. We are very open. We are at your disposal. We are available and we were able to create this very nice space and environment. Some of you will have noticed that there are two trees or four trees at the back of the hall, which were different. We had some problems on the evening of the opening. Some trees didn't have enough leaves, so overnight we replaced them. So this was a slight blemish, and we would like to ask for your pardon for that. It was very important for us to offer to you a new press center, a new infrastructure, and I hope that you have appreciated this innovation. I hope that you have enjoyed the better working space, which has allowed you to make reports the way you wanted. This press center will be there again next year, but I cannot guarantee that it will be in the same location as this year, and you'll understand why. Last but not least, the digital side of everything. Our new application made it possible for you to have access to new services. The augmented reality, for example, that's only a beginning. Just a few minutes before I started this presentation, I was told that there were some glitches. For example, the restrooms, the toilets were not 
in the plan. So this is a mistake, and of course, we will try and improve this for next year. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that was the retrospective, if you like. That was Basel 2019. So let us now look at the future. The film that we're going to show you has been shown to all the exhibitors. Some of you have seen parts of it when we were preparing it, making it. Now we're going to present to you Basel World as we see it, our concept. When I say we, I mean we as the organizers, but it includes also the we, all of us. This is a film which was not just made based on an idea we had, but it is the conclusion we draw from all the talks we've had, contacts we've had since I was hired here. I gave you the number of meetings we've had, 829, and this film is a conclusion. It's a kind of a distillation of what we see as the vision of Basel World 2020.
Ceci, mesdames et messieurs. So, ladies and gentlemen. It's like when you go to the restaurant, you order something from the menu. But here you have seen all the changes that we are processing today. Now, all the transformations cannot possibly be managed in one year. We are planning on a three-year period of transformations, and we are fully aware of the fact that the major transformation that everyone is waiting for has to be done right away. In fact, we've already started working on some aspects, and in the next weeks and months, we will be able to make some announcements for you, to you, that are in line with this menu that you've seen. Obviously, it's also a question of budget, and I'm quite forthright about this. Transformation will cost a lot of money, and you can understand easily that everything cannot be done at the same time. So some transformation will be done right away. In 2020, a first stage of this transformation will be made, and then in the years to come, we will continue to transform Basel World. The first point I'd like to raise is the tagline change. That's the line that is right underneath Basel World. It's important, it's essential for us that Basel World is not just a watchmaking platform, but that Basel World is a platform of the whole industry, watchmaking, jewelry making, gemstones, pearls, and the related industry. I know that in French, branche annex related industry is not well liked, so we'll rather talk about a technical sectors. So let me come back to one or two points that you will maybe have seen and will remember from watching the film. Experience platform is a term used frequently. What does this mean? According to our definition, Basel World will become an exchange platform where the whole industry that is part of it can communicate in a multilateral way 365 days a year. Now, this communication will not be here 365 days a year in Basel, but it will be digital, multilateral. All the actors on this stage of this community that we form will be able to communicate with one another. And for one or two weeks, this community will have a gathering here in Basel for a meeting to celebrate this industry. I think this is very important. All those who spoke at the beginning of the press conference last week expressed this very well. To the question, do we really need Basel World, this kind of event? Well, just check the number of meetings you had, the number of customers you met, how many consumers you saw, how many collectors you had encounters with, how many influences you received. I do not believe that this gathering and this possibility of making business at a very high qualitative level can exist in a numerical, in a digital form. That is why our industry needs this platform. So. Back to us, we have to create the platform that you deserve and need. So that is the transformation as we see it. And who will benefit from this transformation? Here you have a summary. The watch brands, jewelry, gems and pearls, related industry, and the actors of this community are you, are we, the collectors, the consumers, the retailers, the wholesalers, all these people whom we've crossed in the aisles these past few days, we all shape and make up this community. And Basel World has to be the platform for 365 days a year in a digital form and for the few days in a physical form here at Basel World. Now, what other changes specifically are being prepared? Hospitality, I mentioned this already. We are deploying our efforts there. 
we will soon be able to announce very substantial progress. Then event zones. What do we mean by event zones? What we have here, we have an event zone. It's a stage with a screen. And it's not just we who will be using this event zone. This kind of space that such an infrastructure has to be used, put to good use, uh, conferences, for example, but not just physically, also digitally and by streaming. This is done elsewhere, and we have to start doing this as well. Now, AR and VR, augmented and virtual reality, this digital transformation presentation of items, of articles, has to make full use of this technology. Retailer Summit, honestly, this is something we would have loved to present to you this year, but we didn't since there were some other challenges that took up more of our time. I think we need to organize such summits for the retailers with lectures or conferences that are designed more for collectors or for consumers. So we have to have a mix of different kinds of events that are organized here at this spot and elsewhere at Baselvold. Another interesting idea was, for example, to create a platform for CEOs where CEOs can meet and discuss certain subjects that are close to their heart. A platform for CEOs on which one can organize talks or discussions, debates, where CEOs are willing to speak before an audience about things that concern them, that preoccupy them. Services. We have spoken more about the services in terms of events that we can offer or provide. Well. There's also marketing services. Here we could help the medium sized, smaller brands that don't necessarily have the financial means to do their own marketing. So we should be able to give them some support, either digitally or through other services in this area of marketing. We have specialists who have already offered these services this year to some customers, and the feedback has been so positive that we will expand such services. And then the e-concierge. What do we mean by an e-concierge? Well, the purpose we're trying to achieve is that when you decide to come to Basel World, you will be able to see on your smartphone, OK, I want to arrive at Basel World the first two days. I want to be accommodated in such and such hotel. I want to take this or that uh, airplane. I want to go and see the Fondation Bayeller one afternoon. All this on your smartphone. So this application will be giving you access to these services. This will be launched in the next few weeks. And from then on, you will be able to book your trip directly through and on this application. So these are some very specific projects that we are already developing and will be, develop will be announced as soon as the services are actually live. Communication, 365 days a year. I think nothing else needs to be added. Chatbots, that's a service that was already up and running this year. This is a technology that helps us to develop the services even more, for example, ticketing or fixing of meetings. And it's not we who will be fixing the meetings with the brands. We will not be acting as an intermediary. Every brand will take its decisions autonomously. The brands will continue to organize themselves and fix their own meetings. And then, ladies and gentlemen, pricing. About 80% of interviews that I gave these past few days focused on pricing. 
So before we go into details, let me make a comment. Now, in our business, I've never seen a partner or customer who would have told us, could you two perhaps increase the prices? That simply does not exist. So prices that are too high is something that all fairs and exhibitions and organizers of fairs have. So before we talk about the price per square meter, let's look at the costs that the exhibitors have. With this chart, we are trying to reflect reality. And let me just specify that this is an average. The vast majority of costs that exhibitors have are related to the stands, the booths, the building of the booths the ones you see as you walk through the halls. About 30% of the cost are overheads or various costs like um, hotels, staffing, marketing, and so on. And 15% is accounted for by rentals. So when we talk about a price per square meter, it's these 15% we mean. We are fully aware of the fact that it was necessary to think about this, and we did this. And per, there will be some reductions per square meter, depending on sector, from 20 to 30 percent. It will depend on the sector how much of a reduction can be given. One question that is really of interest, and that's the setup of Basel World 2020. What I can tell you today is that in this very hall, certain adjustments will be made, certain changes will be made. We've spoken about this experience platform. Of course, there'll be additional experience spots at all the levels. This stage will probably be at the same location next year as this year. It may be larger or smaller, but there'll be similar stages elsewhere in Basel World. The largest change, and you have to understand that this is a change we have to make, and we'll be doing it in very concrete terms. All the gems and pearls that were in Hall 3 will be transferred to Hall 2. So Hall 2 will be reopened, and what we will locate there is the gemstones and pavilions that were in Hall 4 this year. And then we'll set up a new sector which will be devoted to innovation, to digital transformation, to connected watch, watches and wearables. That will be a new sector in terms of style, it won't be a sector that will resemble this design here. It will be experienced, very modern, very futuristic, very cozy. I'm not saying that this, the environment here is not modern or not cozy, but our approach there will be more urban, dynamic, young, and the objective, of course, is to make sure that Basel World can also be attractive to a potentially younger audience. So these are just some of the ideas we have about layout and configuration. These are the red rings, what it might look like, and I want to make sure that you understand that this is just a concept, an architectural concept. Some of the stands that we will be building could very well look like this, have this style, this architectural style. We've just spoken about Hall 2.0. On your right, when you enter, you have this new sector devoted to innovation and digital transformation wearables, connected watches, and all the other sectors will then be located around the center on the ground floor. Then on the first floor, 
gemstones and pearls. This is still at the stage of an idea. It's possible that the, the gems and pearls sector may be located on the ground floor, but we still have to see what is, what is most appropriate. But what is certain is that they will be in Hall 2 with a proviso here. The decisions as to the levels the stories have not yet been taken. What is certain is that it will be in Hall 2, but whether it's zero or one. So, these are some very specific ideas of what will change next year or by next year. You have seen the whole menu that we want to go through until 2023. This is how we want to change Basel World. So it's not just we, the team, which I would like to thank, of course. It's, new, it's we with you. This transformation can only be achieved with your support. We cannot manage it on our own. But what we need above all is your feedback. The more feedback we get from you, the better the end result will be of this transformation of Basel World. It's not in our interest, it's mainly in your interest. So these are the ideas we have for 2020, 2021, 2022. Basel World 2019 is now part of history. And we are already looking to the future, to Basel World 2020. Thank you very much for everything. And I am, of course, at your disposal if you have any questions. Thank you very much. <laughs> There are several microphones at your disposal, and they will be brought to you if you wish to put a question. But wait until you get the microphone, please, so that everyone can hear. Peter Baum, wristwatches journal. What about the dates next year and the two following years? Answer. I expected that would be the first question, and thank you for putting this question. Indeed, I'll answer right away. The industry was interested in coordinating and harmonizing the dates, and I continue in French. Coordination of the dates was something that came from industry, and we understood very well that we, SIHH, and Basel World understood this importance, and we looked for the dates that would fit and suit everyone. I can tell you it was not easy. Quite simply because Basel World actually occupies this, these premises three months, and SIHH also needs their premises for two months for the mounting, uh, the show, and then the dismantling. So when you have an event that occupies premises for two or three months, and there are other events that take place in Basel and in Geneva, there's the motor show in Geneva, there's Swiss Bau in Basel. Whenever you shift the dates, this has an incredible impact, not only on those who organize the events, but also on all the other shows. A lot of work was done in Geneva and in Basel. The ideal date does not exist, and let me explain why this so. In February, you have Chinese New Year. No fair in our industry can take place in February. In January, for the jewelry industry, this is not ideal either because they have the end of year business that has only just closed. In March, we have the motor show in Geneva. So the first possible date that we were able to find was the month of April, or the period, let's say. So we agreed on the month of April. So in 2020, the dates are the ones that have already been announced. And I think 
Both Basel and Geneva will then analyze how it's worked out next year, and then we'll see what to do in the next years. Ramadan actually takes place at the same time as the Basel World and SIHH next year. And we'll also do our best to take into account the fact that Ramadan is at the same time as our two shows next year. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm called Asbani. I've been at this fair for 30 years and I go to 15 other shows during the year and I've been doing this for 30 years. Since you've asked for feedback, I have given you my personal feedback and that of my customers. This show will never have the success it had in past years for very simple reasons. Simply because there are such, there's such a low number of exhibitors. So what we should focus on is not so much on the digital side, but to make sure that we get back as many exhibitors as possible so that we can attract the buyers. That is what my customers told me. Since there are so few exhibitors, you will not travel 12 hours simply to come to Basel. You will go to Las Vegas or Hong Kong. That is what we heard from our customers. Basel World simply doesn't have the prestige anymore. It has a unique prestige. The customers who came to our stand said that, well, we can go through the whole show in two hours. In the past, one used to spend at least a week here in Basel. I don't think that uh, people noticed that there was a change, uh, uh, the, the replacement of the two trees. They, I don't think, noticed the new signage for the restrooms. I think we have to work much harder to get back a larger number of exhibitors. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Some of my team asked me, when will we start the organization of Basel World 2020? And I said, tomorrow morning, we have to work on, in an unrelenting way. The future of Basel World 2020 is with a larger number of exhibitors, but the future can only be guaranteed with good quality buyers. In the past, our only focus was the well-being of our exhibitors. In the future, we will have to focus not only on the well-being of our exhibitors, that goes without saying, but also the well-being of those who come and see the exhibitors, the retailers, the buyers. Their well-being is just as important. So we have to take care of them in two ways. We have to make sure that the buyers come back. But for the buyers to come back, we need to have Basel World with more exhibitors. And for the exhibitors to return to Basel World, we have to modernize the format. So we have to first modernize the format, make Basel World more attractive, to have more exhibitors. And with more exhibitors, we will also have more retailers. Since we're talking about work, that is how I see my work, uh, I, we were in a downward spiral. That was the wrong direction. And our job is now to invert the direction and make sure the spiral is an upward moving one again. So we have to do our work, our job. And I say, yes, we are doing our job. It's very intensive. It's time consuming. And all of us have to pull on the same rope. Your conclusion that you have drawn about the visitors is partially correct. I myself have also met with clients who said to me, yes, there were fewer visitors, that's true, but 
Our, the business deals we struck were excellent because the few who actually came to see us were able to stay on our stands a little longer and the deals we struck were perhaps also better because of that. But the spiral has to be inverted and go in the right direction again. Mr. Rothstein? Julian? Julian? Uh, good evening, or oh, good, good afternoon, sorry, it's been a long show. My name is Julian, I'm the <coughs> owner and designer of Teresi Jewelry. Um, to put in perspective uh, what Mr. Hasbani said, I've also been coming here since 1977. Uh, I've seen the show change, I've seen the sewing machines leave, I've seen the watch companies uh, grow from beautiful booths to magnificent booths. I've seen the jewelry section become smaller. But with all we are saying and all that Mr. Medikoff is doing, um, let us not forget that everybody's been bashing Basel. What about some self-reflection, we as exhibitors? We have had, at this past show, a record show. Um, and I don't say this lightly because I did not expect a record show, but we did work tirelessly, but absolutely tirelessly to try and grow the show and be positive, invite our guests, look after our guests, not only during the show for an order, but taking them to expensive dinners, looking after them at the airport, making sure that the cars were picking them up doing the things that we as exhibitors need to do, and not only saying, Basel World, what are you doing for us? We as exhibitors have a role to play. This is a platform that Basel World, under the umbrella of Basel World, creates, but we as exhibitors have to wake up. The good times are over. I don't think we'll ever get back the amount of visitors that we had in the past, simply because there are less jewelers also in the world. Let us not forget that. That has nothing to do with Basel World. Every single country that I go to every year loses jewelry stores, whether in the watch or in the jewelry industry. That has nothing to do with the past. That has nothing to do with Mr. Melikov. That has to do with the, the, the situation we are in. Retail has changed and will continue to change. And I'm glad that Basel World is prepared to see the modern world and we need to join. So, yes, we need to be critical. Yes, we need to be open and try to grow with them, but we need to join them and not be opposed to them. That's thank, you my view. thank you very much, Julian. I think we, or I hope, we also have other questions, maybe. Thank you. It's working. Bonjour, uh, Lucas. Pardon. Oui, de la, de la société Marcel Robinson. Je voulais savoir, vous avez parlé de... You talked about the date in April. Could you perhaps give us the exact date in April 2020 for Basel World? Yes, I should be able to, but you've really got me uh, backfooted. It's the end of April, but I can give you the exact date in a minute. Well, someone spoke about the 1st of May. Yes, it'll be just before or after the 1st of May. One thing is quite certain, and that is SIHH will start and Basel World will follow. Next question. Seiler, I am the Editor-in-Chief of Expo Data. First of all, I would like to congratulate you for this very concrete vision. I would never have uh, expected this. I represent marketing and I'm very interested in the business model. You said that 15% of costs is devoted to the rentals of stands, 55% is infrastructure, if I've understood you correctly, so that the renderings, as you call them, would contribute less to your revenues and the individual booths. 
So it would be more the infrastructure. I don't know whether I understood you correctly. So if you want to be in the infrastructure sector, then you can only do so thanks to your own experience. Is that correct? Well, thank you very much for that question and your comments. In fact, there are two elements that are important. First of all, when we talk about infrastructure, we are not talking only about our company Expo Mobilia. We will be cooperating with stand builders who fit in with Baselworld's idea of quality and workmanship. Secondly, when we speak about revenues, and at the same time I mention price reductions, you obviously will wonder how Loris Melikoff manages to do this. Well. This can only be possible if we can create other revenue streams, and this can only be done by offering other services. The margins of which will be of advantage to other actors. Clearly, if I provide a service to our industry, I wonder why we don't have these margins, why they are reserved to other actors. So there are new, new services we could think of, like digital ones, which could create new revenues so that we could actually fuel the transformations. May I uh, give the floor to others who may have questions, but I'll come back to you later on, Mr. Seiler. The date, the date, thank you so much. The date of Basel World 2020 is as follows. I do apologize. That's a bit weird that the head of the fair does not know the exact dates. It's 30 of April to the 5th of May. The SIHH will end on the press conference of the opening. That's the 29th of April. And we have our first day on the 30th of April. So the retailers and the journalists will therefore be able to travel from Geneva to Basel. Thank you for giving me the dates. Back of the room, another question. Hi. First of all, I would like to congratulate you. Since July until now, you've done a great job. Uh, thank you also for the press center. We had a great collaboration and great services by your team and by Darwell. I would like to also inform you that uh, constructive positivity is the foundation of uh, reality and evolution. And uh, I think there's nothing wrong with Basel. We just have to be positive and work towards the future. Now, my question is, I, I love what you've done for 2020. Would you be considering also to add uh, educational platform? Because I believe most of the visitors would like to be educated, maybe, or be informed about the watchmaking, the fine watchmaking, progress, history. I think that would be quite interesting also from a perspective of the exhibitors, because most of the watch brands would love to have that platform added. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um... Yes, of course, we are talking about education. We mentioned it in the, in the video. Um, there, there are two points in when we talk about education. Of course, we, all of us, we need education. So um, when we talk about Retailer Summit, of course, there is also a kind of education and, and knowledge that is transferred during, during this, this kind of events. But uh, we also think about education for younger people that arrive uh, in, in, in our industry. And, and therefore, we, we, we think about different uh, approaches. The first one is, uh, and we did it already this year, um, it was a spontaneous uh, um, uh, initiative to, to offer a platform for startups in the watch industry. That was a test uh, with, with a watch incubator, and this is a very first approach. We are going, of course, um, as it was a, a really good thing, we are going to improve it, but not only for watch industry, but also for jewelry and gem industry. Um, then 
Uh, we had yesterday uh, a very interesting discussion with uh, political representatives from uh, Neuchâtel, uh, uh, Le Canton de Jura, but as well uh, with uh, representatives from France. And there are famous schools in France and of course also in Switzerland. And uh, Baselworld should be the platform for these kind of schools to be present here at Baselworld and to show what they, what they can present for, for young students and, and uh, yeah, students that, that, that finish their, uh, their, their studies and, and start a career in this industry. So we have to be this platform, we can be this platform, but even more, and I close maybe my answer with uh, this, this consideration. Uh, we talked about yesterday with these politicians that of course Basel World has to be the platform where politicians from all these areas, independently whether they are Swiss or French or German, should meet and talk about the, 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 the future of this industry. So education is of course a, a very important subject. Yeah. No? Uh, hello, thank you for all the information today. Um, I was wondering if you'd had any uh, talks with big exhibitors, Rolex, Paddock, uh, Roberto Coin here in Jewelry, about their plans for coming back in 2020, if you have any indication who might be coming back and who might not? Of course we talk to each other. <laughs> we, talk, we talk to each other and they talk, of course, all these brands, they talk to each other and they all want to know whether they come back or not. But uh, I think they are all in the middle of their discussions and it's not up to me to tell them whether they come back or not. They will announce their uh, decision, I guess, very soon. Thank you. Oui. Encore d'autres questions? Are there any other questions? Right at the back. Uh, merci yes, thank you on behalf of all the journalists for the wonderful press center that was put at our disposal. Last year, at the same time, the presiding director swore that in 2019 the halls would not change, that everyone would be uh, on the ground floor. Since, the, since then, she has left, the CEO of MCH has left, and a whole lot of brands have left. What makes you think that you will still be there next year? What makes you think that you may not have to reconfigure the sectors to receive other brands. Thank you for that question. Well, first of all, it's not my habit to swear, so I will certainly not swear. And secondly, all the changes that we have undertaken have been done so in close cooperation with the brands, watchmaking and jewelry, gems and pearls. So a survey was made, a questionnaire was sent out, we analyzed the responses. And when I started my job here, you know this very well, I had many talks with the other managers. Now, if we can present a vision to you this day as we have, then it is because we were able to summarize all these talks with all these people and sectors. If someone, if a sector, a brand, a company feels that they don't need this company, they'll take the appropriate decision and not come back. But I believe that this vision ultimately stands for what the industry is asking for, and the industry will accept this and follow this. I can also tell you that the feedback that we had following the viewing of this film in the Blue Room were very positive and encouraging, and without naming the brand, I can tell you that just before I came to this press conference, I learned that some brands, and this has to be said, because it's only it's easy to talk about all those who have left. I just learned that one big brand that exhibits here in Basel will stay, but in addition to everything, will expand the surface area. And some of the brands that left and have not exhibited in 2019 and with whom we've had contacts have already promised that they'll return. So I think we have a concept that arises from all the discussions we have had and will convince the, the industries, the various sectors. Julian? 
No? No? Okay. Did you ask for the floor? <coughs> Julian. Leticia Chow from JNA. Uh, we all know that unity is a strength. It's actually very sad to see that the luxury uh, brands of the Swiss uh, watch industry being so divided. And uh, Basel World had been um, a very useful platform, an effective platform for the Swiss to showcase <coughs> the very best of the Swiss watch industry. So I just wonder what would bring the, those brands back together? Well, you have to ask uh, these guys. The, the impression I have is, is slightly different, but maybe it's also because I, I just started nine months before. But uh, what I could see in the, in the last weeks and last days is, is that the representatives, the CEOs of all these brands, they talk to each other. So, of course, you, we are not all friends, we know that, <coughs> because some of us are competitors and this is normal, that's business. But um, I wouldn't be so negative and say that the, 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 the industry is divided. We are here, one family, but we are also, we also are competitors, that's life. So it's up to us to create this, this, this platform that, that uh, makes this... <coughs> Can I have to drink something, Regie? <coughs> Sorry. Um, it's, it, we have to, to create this, uh, this, this platform uh, to, to bring all people together. That's the place. And here, thank you very much. Other questions? Julian? Yes, I apologize for my uh, outburst. I'm very passionate about Basel. I did have a question, but the mic was taken away from me. Um, my question was, um, in the committee that I saw um, at the opening conference, I saw a lot of people, especially from the watch industry, I saw one person from the jewelry industry, and I think one from the Swiss Federation. Um, will there be in the future more representation from the jewelry sector, um, the stone sector, sure. possibly the sure. machine sector? If, if, this commun if, if this committee um, wants to be really representative, uh, all departments uh, have to be represented. This is the first thing, and all countries have to be represented. We, we talked about with uh, uh, the representatives from, from Japan. They are not represented. It's, it's a quite important industry, and uh, we, we uh, decided that, that one representative uh, from Japan should be in one of these committees, of course. So we are going to open it uh, a little Thank bit. You. That makes sense. But you, you also have to understand that, that we cannot have a representation from every, every canton, uh, every country, uh, every style. Uh, it's not possible because if, if the committee is too big, it, it becomes nearly impossible to, to take decisions and, and to work and, and to bring everybody together several times per year. Fully understood. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yes? No? Is that a question or just a handy? Okay. So can we agree on the very last question? Or would you kill me then? So you laugh. So, or you, you, you really want to kill me or... or okay, now I know so I have a kind of frage. Just a follow-up question. You said that would open up uh, the cooperation with stand builders to Swiss builders exclusively or also others? No, 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 also European ones. There are some very good stand builders outside of Switzerland, is so Mr. Melikov's answer. So this is the very last one, and then it's really finished. No, 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 there's first, first one merci, question merci, over here. Uh, merci de prendre ma question. Thank you for accepting my question. I have just a simple question on profitability or the return of Basel World. MCH presented figures at the right time, just before the show started, with an operating loss, and Basel World 
was part of the components that contributed to this loss. So is Baselworld profitable for the group or not? Answer. I think it was the Schweizer Illustrated yesterday uh, called me CEO of MCH. I am the CEO or the managing director of Baselworld, but thanks to Schweizer Illustrated for this promotion. So I am the managing director of Baselworld, and obviously I can only give you information and answers about Baselworld. Of course, management and the board of directors of MCH expect from me to turn Basel around and make it profitable. But it isn't profitable yet. Well, my question is about Basel World. Is Basel World profitable today? Answer. Well, we've invested a lot in Basel World for this edition of 2019. So this year we invested, and we cannot say that this year Basel World is profitable, isn't giving us a return on the investment. Next year, <coughs> this is Sard Arikan from Arikan Group. Don't you think that uh, Ramadan next year, uh, Ramadan is starting 23rd of uh, April. So next year is the transformation year of the Basel world. Do you think that it's a stress for us or not? Can you precise your question? I'm not sure. I, I, Ramadan, uh, Ramadan is starting uh, yes. 20, yes. 23rd. So Basel will start end of April. Yes. So many Islamic country people may, may not be visit. No, we try to do everything uh, uh, and we consider that then Ramadan is. Of course, it's, it's, uh, we, we have to adapt our opening hours and, and probably also a few facilities with uh, um, uh, in catering in terms of uh, catering, but also uh, rooms for you. Um, we, we consider that and we, are, we have a very serious concern about that. So we try to make the most possible to, to, to make it, even if you have to come to, to Basel, but to make it the, the, convenient, the most convenient possible. We are very con concerned about that, but, but once again, as, as I talked before, uh, as I said before, it's nearly impossible to find the perfect, day, the perfect date that f fits to everybody because there are also Jewish, uh, very important Jewish uh, celebrations. At Christmas, of course, all Catholics uh, won't be happy to, to prepare or... or so it's, I think we have to, to consider it the best possible way, and that's what we try. We try. Okay. Mesdames et messieurs. Ladies and gentlemen. That's it. I have to applaud you because you are Basel World, we are Basel World. That was it. 2019 is over in a few hours. Now, please uh, join us for a cocktail, I think. There is a cocktail, a drink. Uh, please join, our, join us over there. Je vous remercie et je vous Thank you. Thank you. Join us for drinks and thank you for your attendance.